Tulsi Gabbard did actually manage to pass an amendment to force the White House to report the effects of sanctions. And of course, nobody's talking about that. Um, she wants to know what the effects of sanctions are in the countries that we are sanctioning. And she, she, it says the Treasury is currently blocking over 8,000 individuals around the world from the U.S. economy as part of a 35 different sanctions program. Sanctions are an act of war, as a reminder. Some of them dating back decades. And there are near total U.S. economic blockades on North Korea, Cuba, Iran, Venezuela, and Syria. Hey, what, do you, what do those countries have in common? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. They don't like us, and they don't like us interfering in, in their countries. I wonder, so why they don't like, uh, I wonder why they don't like the United States government, fam. Yeah. Uh, note those countries. They're all evil. We're, we're the innocent ones here. They're evil. But the U.S. government has never had to publicly measure the success of these sanctions, whether they actually pressure hostile governments without harming civilians. Let me let me make shorten it for you. They do not do anything to do anything other than hurt civilians. Um, that may change next year. If, if Rep. Tulsi Gabbard has her way, the foreign policy maverick has successfully passed an amendment to the military budget in the House of Representatives, forcing the president to collect and publicly report data on the impact of U.S. sanctions worldwide every year. The amendment still has to pass the Senate, but if it makes it into the military budget, it will almost certainly become a part of U.S. law. Too often... U.S. sanctions are levied against another country in an attempt to punish that country's leader without consideration of what the real impact of those sanctions are, Gabbard said in a statement. In reality, these sanctions are like a modern-day siege, most impacting the sanctioned country's citizens, limiting their supply of food, water, medicine, and basic supplies they need to survive, resulting in great sickness, suffering, and death. She added that there's currently no assessment or accountability for our country's leaders for the effects of sanctions. There you go. Con hats off to Tulsi Gabbard for understanding sanctions and understanding what they do and wanting some accountability. There's that word again, accountability. From the Pentagon to the military to our police department to our politicians, there is no accountability for what these people do. They get to do whatever the hell they want. They put it in, in a legalized form of crime and they get away with it and there's no accountability. This is why people are protesting. I hope more people understand that sanctions are an act of war. Notice how Israel, who should be sanctioned, who should be the one exception with, with the BDS movement, is not sanctioned at all. It's the opposite. It's, we are literally We're funding, funding Israel instead of funding our own people, okay? And we, we are literally indirectly, in my, in my opinion, actually directly contributing to what they're doing to pal Palestinians. So, uh, but you're an anti-Semite if you say that, so. Uh, real quick, fam, I want to see this. Tulsi spoke about sanctions on the couch. You know, our involvement in our knack for regime change wars and yeah. imperialism. Venezuela has been a huge topic right now as far as foreign diplomacy. Do you support Jimmy Carter's assertion that um, Maduro was legitimately elected? And also, do you feel like our sanctions are mostly to blame for the economic situation that has developed in Venezuela? Um, I haven't heard uh, Jimmy Carter's statement. Um, I there have been a lot of uh, differing views on Maduro's election itself. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the leader of that country. The United States needs to keep our hands off of what the Venezuelan people are currently going through right now, which is determining uh, what kind of leadership in future that they want for themselves. Right. That R that that is ultimately the bottom line. Uh, I think there's no question that our sanctions have uh, certainly uh, played a role in exacerbating the, the humanitarian crisis that exists mm -hmm. there and the hardship that the Venezuelan people uh, are dealing with. This is one of the problems with our sanctions regime overall. Uh, and I just found this out because I was looking for information about what are the impacts of our sanctions They've never around been the world, yeah. around the world, and who is suffering as a result? Because most often what we're hearing is it's not uh, the intended quote unquote targets, uh, whether it's leaders in the government or whatever. It is the people exactly. in these countries yeah. who end up really oh, suffering. Yeah. And the super chat right now is going crazy over yeah. your answer, by the way. They, they've been but, waiting but for somebody else to say that. Here's That's in the, the leadership thing. Position. What I found is that there is no uh, report or mechanism in the United States government that assesses the impact of our sanctions. Are, what was the what was the objective? Are mm -hmm. they working? 
What are the perhaps negative unintended consequences? How are they impacting our country, our economy, our interests? So I'm, I'm literally working on a bill right now to, uh, to introduce in Congress that would make this uh, assessment um, a regular thing so that we leaders, we the people can actually look I think most people don't even know how many sanctions we have yes. around the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, who is suffering as a result? Always right. the people. It's a good thing Bef that the uh, combo couch did a show on that two weeks ago. About <laughs> no, I mean All right. So as you guys heard, that's pretty awesome to, to see that she, what she was spoke, speaking about on our show. Fam, that was over a year ago she said that. Over a show. year ago. Over a year she ago. She managed to push that out. If anything, that is at the very least it should pass. She has a way of getting uh, things passed, actually, of, of you know, talking and, and getting things done. It's too I, bad she supported Biden, though. It's, I mean, it's, it's too bad she supported know. Biden. As long as you're a Democrat, it's like, fuck. As, as long as you're a Democrat, yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, she supported Biden, but she hasn't been saying that Joe Biden's going to be the most progressive president. Yeah. <laughs> like Bernie has. Like Bernie. Bernie's pissed me off so much more. Um, and people were like, wow, you're so mad at Tulsi. I'm like, yeah, but you just wait until Bernie does it. And he has literally just gone. He's been kind of campaigning for Biden. For Biden, yeah. I haven't really seen Tulsi say anything about Biden since no. she's endorsed him. So that's something we as, as uh, and I say we as burners to those people watching who are burners. Like, if you're going to cancel somebody like Tulsi Gabbard over that, he, like, you, you better be canceling Bernie. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't canceled either of them because I think that they are in a the system is so corrupt. I mean, we're talking about it now. Look how corrupt of a system it is that it pushes people that I think are genuinely good. I think Bernie's a genuinely good person. And I think Tulsi is a genuinely good person. And I think it pushes them into compromises because they can't do anything. Like they can't like escape the system. At least they feel like they can. I mean, I think right now we don't have a structure for a third party that's good. Like she has said before, I would run third party if there was like something in place that would allow me to compete in you know equally with 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 the Democrats and the Republicans. That doesn't exist right now. It really doesn't. But I think it's because people are afraid to take that leap too. And we need to like we need to create. That's why I'm saying we're, we don't have power in the electorate right now. We need to build outside movements and then create a third party or or uphold whatever's already there. And, and run with it because we're not going to get anything by continuing to vote, even for progressives in the Democratic Party when their hands are tied at every turn. We've seen it happen with a squad. And so I just think, you know, I think that we have to focus on what is the, the core issue of the problem here. It is our, our system. It, it's so controlled by the military industrial complex. And I think that is a huge part of why Bernie Sanders, you know, like his foreign policy didn't really push that hard against a lot of the 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 military industrial complex lately he used to back in the day a lot more and that's why they called him a communist and a socialist and they smeared him they smeared her as an assad apologist that's what they do they smear you and they discredit you and and, and you know people are left without without like hardcore like le leadership and i think we need to see these politicians come out more i would like to see tulsi gabbard come out and continue maybe a, outside of the democratic party I'm, I'm hoping, so we'll see.